All right, let's let's move up a level of scale again. We've been talking about circuits and systems within you know, a single human organism. Let's move to systems where the components are not cells, but humans, right? Larger than single human systems, maybe economy, society, a community, media, swarm, so on. And th- the first question I have here is how far up we can take uh, your work? Because, you know, for example, theory of gap junctions as the kind of primary mechanism applies, I assume, with, with a human organism as the upper limit, but I don't want to assume because it's it's not clear to me that there are uh, gap junctions that can connect humans and their internal milieu in the same way that they're connecting cells. It's kind of a notorious problem that we're black boxes to each other and I can't share the, uh, uh, I can't perfectly share my inside with you. This is actually a source of a lot of anxiety. Um, but maybe there are parallel mechanisms. I don't know. So how far do you see kind of mind melding being that mechanism that, that unites parts into holes? First of all, uh, the, the the black box to each other is is a very interesting problem for a number of reasons. First, first of all, you in fact could you you could gap junction us together, and the, and people have done that uh, before. You can you can do uh, you can do parabiosis, and in particular, you can do brain fusions at the level of. Uh, at the level of tissue, you think about this is this is this is a thought experiment I did um, to try to I, I I really I'm really not into binary categories and and I thought well well surely the the binary category of first person versus third person like that sounds like a really binary category and and no you can you can make a continuum there too and it goes like this I'm sitting here uh, studying uh, studying your brain. And the way I do it is I've got some electrodes sticking in your brain and I'm looking at the data the the data is processed by computer I'm looking at the screen and this is science done in third person. Whatever you're experiencing, I don't know what you're actually experiencing. What I do know is that there's activation in particular uh, areas of the brain, and you know, and I can say some things about that. But but I don't actually know what it's like to have that experience. So so I'm looking at this. I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of electronics here that that may not need to be here. Why don't why don't I why don't I take some of these um, some of the electrodes that are coming out of your head, and instead of plugging them into my computer and then having to look at a monitor, I'm just going to stick them into my own brain. I'm going to like, like, right. Like, well, I mean, why not? It's biofeedback, right? If I can, you know, people, people, um, have, have, uh, people have learned to to have magnetic senses and, uh, you can, you can instrumentize almost anything. You can learn to, to kind of handle like the blind, they have these, um, the electric lollipop, which is this thing that takes images off of a camera and puts it into little, um, little electric zaps on your tongue. And people learn to see that way and they can walk around. It's a, it's a device for, for vision loss. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna, instead of staring at the screen, I don't need this. I don't, I don't, need to pass all this through a computer and my retina. I'm just going to pa- patch your brain directly into my brain. And then I think, well, maybe, you know, these wi- this wire interface probably losing a lot. Uh, I'm just going to, we're just going to directly fuse our brain together. And, you know, you could say that, well, mammalian brains don't fuse together. That's just the detail. That's just because right now they're not pretty, they're not that regenerative, but you can see, and people have done it with animals that, that do this quite nicely. For example, axolotl salamanders, you can, you can do this, you can make you can fuse brains, you can fuse uh, almost anything you want. So at that point, uh, right, so you're progressively going from a purely third perspective, third person perspective. By the time we fused our brains, two interesting things happen. First, this is no longer third person perspective. I, To whatever extent you feel what's going on in your brain, I can now feel what's going on in your brain. Right. For whatever, whatever. And, and I'm not saying we don't we don't have any idea what that is, but but whatever it is that allows you to um, have uh, uh, conscious uh, states with respect to the states of your brain, I now share those. So so sharing mind states is possible. However, there's a there's a price to pay, which is that neither you nor I exist anymore. What exists now is a new creature that used to be part you, part I, but but that's gone now. We have there's a there's a new being because we can no longer for the for the gap junction for the same reason as the gap junction story, we are no longer we no longer have the individuality that allows us to say there's me and there's you. We are and and there are, and there are human examples of every part of the story and those are conjoined twins. There are conjoined twins that share different parts of the body, different parts of the brain. There are there are twins that share brain regions. Like all of this is completely biologically a, 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 a reality. So, so you can, you know, you can in fact do this. It leads to an interesting, an interesting kind of kind of phenomenon, um, which is that if you do, if you do third person science, you can you can learn a lot about neuroscience, about cognition, about behavior, about all, all those kinds of things. If you want to learn about actual consciousness, and I know there's a lot of people that 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 work supposedly on consciousness, I think that that the only way to really work on consciousness is to become part of the system. And this is something that, oddly enough, uh, hundreds of years ago, the old old alchemists talked about this, the difference between 
alchemy and chemistry was supposed to be that chemistry you can do in a third person perspective. You don't change when you're doing chemistry, right? The, the material changes, but you're still you and you take measurements and it's public and it's objective and it's observable. When you're w- the, the alternative to this is you're studying something that is only really understandable from the first person perspective. And the only way you're going to do that is to change. You're going to become part of something. You're going to open up boundaries or, or, do, or, or fragment or do something else where you will find out what it's like. That's the answer to your question about what does it feel like? to do to to be xyz but you're no longer the same person no you can't be right so 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 you cannot remain the same and and so and so i think i think that's um particularly interesting and it's it 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 also it also links to this issue of um you know people and and i don't talk much about consciousness at all i don't don't know that much use you know interesting things to say about it but 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 one of the things i think i it is interesting that i don't hear people talk about much is Let's let's say let's say we reached a uh, a point where somebody had a correct theory of consciousness. Okay, and so this 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 goes back to your question of you know can 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 you really um, feel what another what another being is feeling? If we had a correct theory of consciousness, and I and and what what do what do correct theories do? They they make predictions about specific cases. So now I ask you, okay, well now here's you know I've made this brain and in, in in my laboratory it's got three you know, three hemispheres and it's got some cells from different kinds of animals. Well, who knows what it is? I've, I've made this thing. What is it like to be that creature, right? What, what is the, ne- never mind, never mind what the answer is. What, what is the format of, uh, in which your predict, in which your theory makes predictions? We know, we know the format of every other theory in science, it, it numbers, right? It gives you numbers uh, of various things. What is the, in what format does a good theory of consciousness give you answers? Poetry. I mean, poems. I, I don't. You know, I, to, to me, it's because because numbers aren't going to do it. It can't be numbers. Well, what can it be? I, I suppose it can be poetry. But I think in the end, all all the all all that poetry is in that context is a device to uh, to mimic what you really want to do, which is fuse your brain to it. Right. If you really want to know what it's like to be something. Uh, the closest you're going to get is to become one with it, basically to fuse your brain in some way. And then the new collective will have some, some, you know, some, some mental states that are sort of similar to, to, to what you were looking for. But, but that's, that's the problem, right? Is that, is that third person theories give objective answers in a way that uh, is, is not going, just the format isn't, isn't, isn't appropriate for what you're trying to do.